everybody. Hey, welcome to this uh, Tuesday, February 27th. It's hard to believe. Uh, February is about gone, folks, and we will be into March and Easter and all those things uh, coming for the spring. Hey, yesterday we had kind of a, a, a down day. Everything was uh, taking some profits yesterday, uh, except for the Russell 2000, but everything else was kind of down a little bit. We'll talk about that more uh, when Dave <clears throat> joins us here in just a few minutes. And before we do that, though, let's not forget <clears throat> that there are so many things that you and I we have no control over. However, you can take control of your portfolio. You need to know several things. How much risk you have? How should you be allocated based on your age and your risk tolerance? Those are all things that we go through in our core retirement design. <clears throat> Give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. That, we've got Dave coming up next. <clears throat> Light FM. Good morning. Appreciate you being here. It's 840 now, 20 before 9. Time to check in on what's happening on Wall Street to your IRA and 401k. And it's uh, relatively quiet for the moment. And I kind of guessed yesterday that we were kind of in a holding pattern pending uh, the inflation figures that matter to the Fed a little bit later on this week. But there is some news out there and there are some moves. Let's check in with Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services and find out what said moves are. Philip, good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Dave. Uh, yesterday, I don't know, a little bit of a, a down day, but uh, hey, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin making a skyrocketing return up uh, well over 50000 now. Ooh, that's starting to get into the range where it was five years ago when everybody said it was the hottest new thing going. Of course, now the Congress is introducing bills to prohibit the Federal Reserve from ever regulating crypto. And just what we need, congressmen making decisions like that for us, right? Yeah, exactly. 56,876 is the number from yesterday. So that's, uh, yeah, up 4.4%. What is it all time high? I think it's high was only about 60 or 65, wasn't it? I want to think it was like 62. Yeah, that sticks to my mind. It's a little above 60 somewhere, but yeah, they're getting up toward record highs on cryptocurrency, which means in all probability be down around 30 in about six months, right? <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> yeah. Definitely had a nice little run, though. Uh, yeah, volatility is kind of endemic to the crypto market. Uh, setting the table yesterday, like you said, it was kind of an off day yesterday, but it wasn't catastrophic. It's called, you know, basic little minor profit taking and adjustments. Dow was down by 62. The Standard and Poor's down by 19, and Nasdaq down by 20. And uh, you mentioned that the Russell was the outlier in the bunch. They actually gained a little, and I'm kind of confused given the interest rate atmosphere on that. Generally, they're more interest rate sensitive than the others. Yeah, they, they usually are, but they actually um, made a little bounce yesterday, up six-tenths of a percent. They closed at $2,028, almost 29 So cool. uh, I, mean, I kind of wonder if that indicates a broadening of the rally more than it does anything else, because, I mean, the blue chips kind of get first on this one, then the techs went crazy that drew everything up, and maybe now we're broadening out into the less prestigious growth stocks on the Russell. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's 2,000 stocks, right? So it's a, it's a pretty broad base to, to draw yeah. from. Is, is that, that's not price-weighted, is it? It's, it's capitalization-rated, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's capitalization-rated. Yeah, truthfully, I don't know the 2,000 all that well. I enjoy watching it because the companies I used to work for are all on the Russell, but it's in, in that range. Start the morning out as far as the government data dump is concerned. We got a little bit of a surprise, and we were kind of noodling this through before we went on the air. Durable goods orders, they're blaming it on airplanes. Gosh, I'm looking at you, Boeing. Uh, but durable goods dropped by 6.1% last month, and they were only expecting about 5%. January is a weird month to begin with, but still, that's not a drop you're really looking for. No, it's not. Now, I do have the other number. I don't know if you saw this one, but durable goods minus transportation, which I think that would probably yeah, take the airplanes out, right? Yeah. Uh, down um, just three-tenths of a percent. 
Now, that's a little bit more on the healthy range. And I, I, we were saying before we went on the air, the thing about January for durable goods and publicly traded companies, because they're working on budgets and whatnot down the line, uh, you clear out your capital goods budgets and your capital acquisitions budgets in December, get heavy then. And once you've done January, generally there's not a lot of demand in January unless it's approved stuff that came in in budgets in December. Uh, so it, it, you know, it's a month that really is hard to put a nail into and figure out what it's supposed to be in January. It's got to be a hinky month in general. Yeah, I, I think so. The beginning of the year, or so it's um, yeah, it's one of those numbers. Is I, I don't know that it's watched all that closely, but um, obviously it's one of the things that goes into uh, what the Fed looks at, and it goes into what the year ends up as the whole as well. Bunch of whole news items coming out in the process and the impact upon earnings among other things, and probably the lead in the bunch probably is Macy's. We were all excited a few months ago that they actually had a buyout going on. Everything looked like it was going to be hunky-dory, and Macy's was going to roar back. Not only do they have a miss, but they're closing a bunch of stores. This does not sound good on their quarterly report, does it? No, it doesn't. They're actually going to close. They came out and said 150 stores. That's a, that's a pretty good chunk of, uh, of stores to close. Now they they did come out they they missed on revenue by by a little bit um, earnings were you know I think about, about in line that that was not so bad but the, they missed on earnings I mean on on revenue they did actually do a little bit better in same store sales I mean they were down four point two percent but the expectation was they would be down almost six percent so um, yeah. Thank heavens uh, for small favors. Exactly, but they're still getting beat up pretty bad this morning, down two percent. That's well. It, it could be a lot worse. I mean, given what we see happen to a tech company when they miss by a little bit, down forty percent. Hey, it's a good day. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> On the other end of the retail trade, I don't think we got a report for them, but Walmart announced a three for one stock split at the end of last week. So the other end of the retail trade is not doing all that badly, I gather. No, they're not. They're they're you know that's one of those things that uh, you know when a stock splits, a lot of times it helps it bounce back up a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I just saw that as being a sidelight and talking about Macy's, the other end of the retail trade done on the discounters. The very least, the big one is doing okay. Uh, we got a whole pile of names that I see on my ticker. I don't know what's coming out later on today or not, but I do know that we heard heard about Lowe's, and uh, we kind of look at Lowe's and Home Depot as being two bellwethers for both housing and discretionary repair expenditures. How did they do? So, so Lowe's came in, and they, they beat on revenue. Um, and earnings as well, and so that was that was good for them. However, uh, their sales are starting to decline. So their their sales were were slowing down last quarter, and they expect them to continue to fall again during this current quarter. And so that's putting some pressure, or at least or, yeah, putting pressure on lows this morning. Uh, they're down a, a little over one point two percent this morning. Um, mm -hmm. but, a lot of retail, right? So we had Macy's, yeah. Lowe's. We have AutoZone. Um, AutoZone, the auto parts retailer, um, they had a really good quarter, Dave. They, uh, they, they came in slightly above expectations on revenue, but on earnings, um, they beat by about a oh, $2.50 a share, basically. Um, they came right. in at yeah, twenty-eight dollars and ninety cents a share versus twenty-six thirty expected. Um, so a, a good a good quarter for them. They're they're making a big jump this morning, up four and a quarter percent, and they're not a cheap stock, Dave. That puts them at twenty-eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars a share. Woo! I remember uh, them in the mid one thousand range. They're up to twenty. Good lord! Yep, at a twenty-eight dollars yep. a share profit, that's a whole lot of oil filters. Yeah, that's a, that's a bunch. Now, we have another uh, company that's uh, well-known, Zoom. And, uh, you know, they, they Zoomed right in on earnings because uh, they had a better-than-expected uh, last quarter. They, um, they, they beat by about $0.07 cents a share, came in at $1.22, a revenue $1.15 billion, a little bit more than expected. I mean, they got a big pop this morning. Um, they were up as much as 12%. That scaled back down this morning. That up 8.2%, though. I, I, I did see a top line on that. They also used the magic word on corporate reports this year. AI, right? 
Yeah, they said they were exploring how they could use the AI to improve their service, and the thought went through my mind. I mean, Zoom is the high-tech equivalent of good old-fashioned face-to-face communications. I mean, what are they going to do, deep fake me when I don't want to show up for a sales meeting? <laughs> uh, it should be interesting. And then uh, we, really? had, uh, we, we had Carvana last week. We got Car Gurus this week, um, and uh, they uh, not not such a, a good quarter. They uh, they were expected to make thirty one cents a share. They only made uh, uh, but somewhere between twenty four and twenty nine cents a share. A revenue missed as well. Um, they're trading down almost eight percent this morning. I'm not really familiar with that. Have they got any brick and mortar contingent, or are they all online? They're online, and they provide like a uh, an app where you can go look for cars. Mm-hmm. And individuals, not only you know, it's kind of like an auto trader. Yeah. Um, individuals can put their cars on there. Obviously, dealers put their cars on there and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd seen the cable TV ads for them, but it was a new company to my you know recollection, and I didn't know anything about what they did. Carvana's got some brick and mortar contingency to go along with their internet. I didn't know whether gurus did or not. No. So I want to leave you with this last one. Uh, it's not an earnings report, but it is a skyrocketing stock overnight. Viking Therapeutics. Um, they have they're a biotech, obviously clinical stage biotech firm. Um, they are working on an anti-obesity drug, and they announced that they met their primary and secondary endpoint goals for their phase two study. Um, and that's a lot of gobbledygook, but but here's what it really means: their stock's up 83 percent this morning. Holy crud! <laughs> I, I know that's a hot sector. I mean, uh, uh, the Facebook groups all over the place talking about the Jardians ad and all of the other anti-diabetic drugs that are out there. That that's a, that that rivals artificial intelligence as a buzzword in the pharmaceutical industry, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It's uh, it does. It's, it's interesting that uh, to watch you. the whole sector. Absolutely. Resetting the table. It was a minor off day yesterday. Call it readjustments as much as anything. Everything off, but not by anything catastrophic. 45 minutes before we open this morning. What are we looking at, Philip? Well, the Dow has actually come almost flat down just a tad right now. S&P 500 is trading up about a tenth of a percent. NASDAQ 100 is up almost three tenths of a percent. The Russell 2000 is just going to keep on going, Dave. It's up almost 1% this morning before we mm. get traded. Uh, on the other side, we got silver trying to make a, a run at 23 again. It's at $22.87 an ounce. That's up six tenths. Uh, gold's up about a third. And then crude oil is, is basically flat right now at $77.55 a barrel. I don't know what you did, but it was down on the 76s yesterday morning. So do you fill up or something? Yeah, you know, it's one oh. of those things. <laughs> it must be it. Overseas markets, the Asian rim, we're going through that China recovering mode again. The Hang Seng and Hong Kong is up by almost a full percent. Both mainland Chinese markets also up by over a percent. The rest of the Asian rim up fractionally at the 6 a.m. close this morning. European markets are a little bit more circumspect about the whole mix. It's mixed bag, the overall index over in Europe midway through their trading day, up about 16 hundredths of a percent. Green but not by very much. Trying to get my retirement in line so I know I can retire and afford to do so when I decide to, that takes more planning than I've got just in my little pea brain. Philip, how do I get a hold of you to make it work? Devin, give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule a core retirement analysis where we'll walk through our design to make sure they're on the right track for the retirement they dreamed on. And then join us this weekend. For the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And back here again tomorrow morning, same time on Light FM. Philip, you have a good day. I appreciate you. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. It's not- hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. Hope your week's going well. See you tomorrow. Bye now.